Let's talk about another recent guest on Dave Rubin show. We're talking about Nick DiPaolo. Um, Nick DiPaolo is a comedian and um, longtime comedian. I've been aware of him for, uh, oh gosh, 20 years, more maybe now. Uh, he's a Boston area guy, very, uh, very much so uh, Boston area. And uh, Nick is, um, likes to think of himself as a breath of fresh air. In fact, here is his poster. Um, oh, let's, let's start, let's start with the uh, first with Nick DiPaolo's, um, well, no, let's start with the poster. Uh, so let's start with Nick DiPaolo's poster. We've got a, a spinning wheel there. So uh, Nick is, um, has always been a bit of a, of a, of a, of a right winger, uh, but uh, a guy who, to be fair, doesn't know much about politics. And uh, I always had a bit of a fantasy of, uh, of going on um, Colin Quinn's old show about 10, 15 years ago. I can't remember what it was. Tough crowd. And uh, debating they would never have me on. Um, no, they were, and I was friendly with Colin. It's just, I think, I, you know, they knew at one point, like, oh, wait a second. I mean, the comedians in that uh, area did not want to talk to me because they felt I knew too much about politics. <laughs> um, and, <clears throat> and, and so here is Nick DiPaolo with his uh, album, uh, his new video, A Breath of Fresh Air. And it's Nick, a... Um, a white guy from Boston of Italian descent, um, giving the finger to, uh, let's see, we have um, one woman wearing a, uh, a stocking cap, uh, another uh, woman of... That's uh, a pussy hat. Oh, a pussy hat, yeah. Uh, another woman with a bullhorn. I can't tell what's on her shirt. A um, couple of women of He's color. He's from Danvers, dude, a couple not of women, Boston. Yeah, a couple of women of color. Uh, one uh, uh, other woman uh, crying. I'm not sure why. And then a uh, she's uh, triggered. A black guy with a black guy uh, lives matter T-shirt and uh, someone with a me too thing. And he's <laughs> given a finger to all of them because he's a breath of fresh air. Now, if you put a hard hat on this guy and uh, put it in like you know 1969 as he's like giving a finger to. Uh, um, to uh, you know, civil rights uh, marchers. That's how fresh this air is. Yeah. And then, um, so Nick is very excited about this because it uh, created a real firestorm, and he was very, very excited on how many, um, how many of the lib turds were uh, making him uh, popular. And uh, then he gets an, uh, a tweet at him uh, from a uh, woman says the guy in the Black Lives Matter shirt is activist. Moyadine Moye, who was shot and killed last year. But yeah, sure, use him as a prop in a shitty Photoshop job to demonstrate how edgy and brave you are. And so uh, Nick said, uh, I did not know that as I found it online in stock photos. Looking into changing it as we speak, my apologies. Wow. It leads me to believe that they did not get rights to those photos. Uh, but pretty edgy stuff. And then Nick is so proud of himself because here he is uh, a little bit later. Trending number one, trending number one on Twitter in New York City minutes ago. Thanks to you, my great fans and the whining leftist maggots. And then if you go down to see where he trends that he posted there, He's trending number one in New York, but guess what's trending number one in the USA of this guy giving the finger to the Black Lives Matter folks. Wow. Trending in the USA, Sandra Bland. New cell phone video shows what Sandra Bland saw during her arrest. She, of course, was the woman who was clearly unjustly arrested. And then uh, three days later in custody with the police obviously hiding Video footage, which showed that the policeman was lying about the threat to his, uh, his life. She died in what was ruled a suicide. I don't know if he was aware of that, what was trending there, or he just is just so oblivious or what. Up yours, guys. 
So this tweet that I did not know that as I found it online in stock photos, looking into changing it as we speak, my apologies, is very similar to this drill tweet. It says, ah, so you persecute Jared Fogle just because he has different beliefs. Do tell. Girls, and then in parentheses, <laughs> girls get mad at me. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm trying to remove it. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Yeah, like, would it make, does it make it any better if the guy were still alive that he's given the finger to Black Lives Matter? Like, come on. No. Isn't the whole point of Black Lives Matter that black people are being killed? Well, here's the point. Here's the thing that I, I don't understand. Why, why apologize for that? Yeah, like, if he's such like, an edgy truth teller. Well, I mean, what difference does it make that the guy died? You're still giving the finger to him. You're giving a finger to the whole idea that um, black people are uh, unjustly targeted by uh, police. He was pre-complaining <clears throat> about being murdered by the police. Yeah. I thought the whole point was, was that when the police murder a black person, you're supposed to respect them for doing their jobs. You should give the guy who arrested and harassed Sandra Blonde uh, a voucher to download your, uh, your yeah, new special exactly. for free on iTunes. Have the courage you of your convictions. Moron. Well, I just dude. don't understand like, why that makes a difference, why he feels he has to apologize. Oh, I didn't realize that he died. Like, honestly, like, like, seriously, the whole point of Black Lives Matter is that there are people dying. You're giving the finger to that. What's different about this guy just happened to be a guy who died? Grow up. But listen, in many respects, we're giving uh, Nick just a little bit more credit probably than is fair because we're expecting him to, um, to apply a little bit of brain power. Now, I know Nick for a long time, and uh, he's, he is not fresh. <laughs> that I would not say. Uh, but here is, before we get to how I know Nick DiPaolo, here is uh, some of Nick DiPaolo's comedy stylings, ladies and gentlemen. And um, this stuff, super fresh. This is the part he clipped for the promo. Yeah, this is what he clipped for the promo. <laughs> There's no respect for white European males anymore. I realized this. I was in Jersey last night, working in Jersey. I had to get on the turnpike to come home. I had to go to the bathroom on the Jersey Turnpike, so I pull into a rest area. What's the name of the rest area? The Vince Lombardi rest area. That's the best we can do for the greatest coach in the history of the NFL. Should we put a statue of him in front of his high school? No, let's build an 18 by 24 brick structure I'll have to exit 13A. Where truckers who have been living on hooker pussy and beef jerky for 14 hours can unload their impacted bowels and where gay guys can exchange filthy blowjobs at 3 a.m. and where pedophiles can come into the faces of terrified children. You know, the shit that Vince Lombardi was for, you know. All right, pause it. Now, <laughs> now this joke uh, obviously wouldn't be as funny uh, to his crowd if it was, let's say, the Walt Whitman uh, rest stop. Um, <laughs> But it's funny that he talks about um, uh, Vince Lombardi. Like, we couldn't give him a statue. Well, actually, they did give him a statue. Let's put up a picture of that statue right now. That is the Vince Lombardi statue. I would imagine that's out in front of uh, the uh, Green Bay Stadium. Um, I think also called Vince Lombardi Stadium. I'm which is sure. also a named after him. In fact, he was such a great football player. It would, be, it would have been nice if the NFL... As an, as, an, as an organization. You only get football stadiums named yeah, after You only get football stadiums because named after Because there's no respect. Well, you, get a, you get a statue. You know, uh, I'll tell you, it would have been nice if the NFL. It's Lambeau Field in Green Bay, not Lombardi Field. Oh, Lambeau Field. Say. Okay. But it would have been nice. It would have been nice if the NFL could have done something. Let's say, I don't know, name the trophy they give to the winners of the Super Bowl after Vince Lombardi. In other words, the Vince Lombardi trophy. Super Bowl trophy, or I think they call it the championship trophy. So here you have Nick DiPaolo, a breath of fresh air, talking about how disgusting it is that they don't, I mean, the premise is we don't have respect for white European males anymore. Boy, that's the story of my life. No respect. Tell her no respect. <laughs> we don't have respect for white males anymore. All they do is they get rest stops and or statues and or uh, huge trophies that are that are given probably uh, in the 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 handing over of that Super Bowl trophy is probably one of the most witnessed uh, events uh, uh, in in television oh, period and the so, biggest sporting event every single year yeah. in the world. Yeah, well, I, I could have said Walt Whitman, but I mean, 
I don't know who, who gives a shit about Walt Whitman. It's like he just wanted the first part about the wh- white exactly. male Europeans don't get respect anymore. It's like, what can I say to make this? Uh, I mean, that was just really. I'd say a lot of bad words too, which is also funny good. when you right. say bad words. Right, when you say right. It's very edgy. Now look, and why should we respect <clears throat> white European males? P.S. Well, I mean, I I don't know that we should not respect or respect anybody or whatnot. It's yeah, just that don't like not, they don't get don't, special don't, respect. Don't, don't, nobody should get special respect. The idea that are. white male Europeans are not respected in our society is absurd. It is absurd. The idea we shouldn't respect of Italian. white aggrievement in this society is absurd. It's absurd today, and it was absurd 20 years ago. Now, I usually don't uh, do this because um, I usually just buy, you know, make my commentary based upon things that are public. But this is just too apropos because we have Nick DiPaolo. He's giving the finger to these Black Lives Matters activists and the Me Too activists is all part of his aggrievement that he feels as a white male. His joke in his trailer, white males are not respected, even though he was wrong, I mean specifically wrong, like there was like so much evidence that he was specifically wrong in his specific claim about Vince Lombardi. He still does believe this white aggrievement. I know that this is not a new phenomena for Nick. I know that this is not a function of Black Lives Matter or Me Too or anything that's happened in the past 20 years. How do I know that? I hired Nick once to play a small part in a show I did for Studios USA. The show was called Beat Cops. It's a show that I wrote with Charlie Fisher, and I directed and acted with John Benjamin, where we both played cops. This was a low-budget uh, production commissioned by Studios USA before uh, or one of the first things shot actually on, uh, on DigiBeta. We converted it to film and went, back to, uh, went to DigiBeta back to film, but that's not the point. Here is the scene where Nick DiPaolo is in, and then I will tell you how I know that Nick DiPaolo has felt this white aggrievement this white male aggrievement for at least 20 years. I don't know how this is a holiday post. I mean, there's, there's nothing Christmas at all around here. There's no shops. There's no people. There's no Christmas decorations. There's not one wreath. I think that's the point. We're put out in the boonies. <laughs> This is gonna be bad. Well, well, well! Look we got here, Jones. My two favorite house mouses, Plankton and Chandler. Well, I mean, Hankton and Stanler. The wimp and the nerd. Out of there, King Arthur. Not speaking to us, because what, uh, we're not of the round table. Your mouth is gonna get you in trouble. Back off, Jones! (laughs) (laughs) All right. I don't know. I liked him there. Yeah. No. That was a great performance. It was a great performance. It was limited. We, uh, we found... (laughs) We found by doing a lot of jump cuts, we could easily go around some poor performances uh, in the context of that. Sometimes your style is uh, determined by the, the fact of, uh, of what you capture uh, in, in the context of the show. And I do remember this, and there's so little of my life that I remember that uh, you know it has to be stunning for me to remember something like this. And I remember being completely stunned. This show we, re- we uh, shot in, I think it was uh, 1999, I think it was. And, um, and so I had um, made a lot of money as a sitcom actor. I had just come out of a very big uh, sitcom deal with NBC where I did a couple of pilots for them, and I pitched doing Beat Cops on the back of uh, Who's the Caboose. They allowed me to do it um, without having any development process. Just, here's the money, go shoot it. And so I had been very familiar with what was going on in Hollywood at that time. It was the heyday for comedians. There were five networks at that time, five national networks, Paramount, WB, Fox, ABC, NBC, CBS, ABC. They were all 
in the sitcom business. Every night from 8 to 10, 8 to 11, almost every single night on every single one of those was a half hour sitcom. They were giving out sitcoms to everybody. I would do stuff called um, second position, which would be that I would do a pilot in March, waiting to see if it goes in May. And then I would do another pilot in April that was in second position to the first pilot. That's I'm that's how sick. much of a I get like literally sellers ill with jealousy when you talk about the oh, time you came up and, and show business. The oh amount God. of money was unbelievable, but it was a seller's oh, market. Geez. So oh. Nick says to me, I'm talking to Nick. It's 1999. Why am I not an early? 50s he says Jew? to me, he says to me, uh, I say, uh, he says, I'm, I'm moving back to New York. You are? Why? Ah, can't stand out of L.A. They just won't give any white guys any jobs. And I thought he was joking. Like, I thought he was going to say, like, I'm like, ha, ha. He goes, no, I'm serious. They won't give any white guys jobs. <laughs> I had literally been on, at that point, three or four different pilots where there was a guy just like Nick DiPaolo, an Italian character, like that, like Guy's Island was literally with one of them called. Like it was so Guy's easy to get Island. a guy Island. It was so <laughs> easy to get a job in that situation. If you had a modicum of talent. Now to be fair, Ooh. well, some people can be funny and not necessarily a great actor. Ooh. <laughs> That's all right. Shit. That's all right. Get those white guys. But, get them. but the white aggrievement, <laughs> the idea that to be in Hollywood in the 1990s and to be a male comedian, and to come up with the theory that they're not giving white guys any acting opportunities on sitcoms, the level of delusion, the level of self-involvement and resent, this, I mean, like, it's just racist. You're just racist because your racism, and you don't think you're racist. You're so deluded by your disdain that you're looking for someone to blame for whatever wasn't happening in your life. And it was just super easy for you to do it. Now, I imagine that was not a new phenomenon for him. But I can assure you, that act of giving uh, the finger to activists is not borne out by the activism. He had the same resent 20 years ago. And now it's just being dressed up in some other fashion. He's updated his resentment. Yes, it's fresh now because I changed the shirts they're wearing in the Photoshop. It's good acting, though, on B Cops. Not bad. Not good bad. directing. Who was the actress, by the way? I can't remember her name. No, she did a good job. She too. was a uh, she was a rapper. She wasn't. I think that was her first no, acting gig. No idea who she is, but I found the you way they bothered both of you very believable. Judy Gold. Judy Gold was also. Yes, indeed. Um, Seems like he was playing himself, really. Who was? DiPaolo. No. Well, it was, uh, no. it, was, it was casting. No, he was not playing himself. He was in method. It's, it's, fu method. it's funny to put him in that helmet, though. <laughs> in the bike helmet? Yeah. Well, the idea was that these guys were the first time they were out of the cage, and they get intimidated in the evidence cage, but they're protected by the cage, and now they're on the streets. What, you and Benjamin got intimidated? Right, yeah. right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I like that they're intimidated by guys with bike helmets on, though. Yeah. I mean, wear your helmets, people, but they look funny. 